stay tuned if you want to see me turn three of these potatoes into some fries. I already ate some. I only cooked like two, three potatoes. But, heads up, just because there's a video about this, do not expect like a super, superb example. This is kind of more my adventure through this. I'll just say, without spoiling anything, that it did not all go according to plan. So here's the remainder of the video. Hi, today I'm going to be showing you how to turn potatoes into small fries. And in order to do this, you're going to need potatoes, a cutting board, a knife, preferably a sharp knife, a potato peeler, a frying pan, some canola oil, and something to season it with. So I'm going to use seasoning salt. And hope it all turns out great. To start with, we're going to want to wash our potatoes and make sure they're really dry. So now that I just went and washed the potatoes off and tried to give them a little bit of drying. And now I'm going to want to go about peeling the potatoes. You want to make sure you don't peel towards yourself because then you're more likely to cut yourself. You want to peel away and just try to get all the skin off because then you don't have to worry about it and it just helps them to crisp up. And then just do this for however many potatoes you are going to be cooking. And now that we have our potatoes all peeled, we're just going to wash them again to make sure there's no nothing on them. And just because it's a good habit to get into. We're going to now take our peeled potatoes, dry them off, so that way we can go and cut them. And you want to make sure they're nice and dry, because if they're not, when you have oil at a really hot temperature, and it hits water, it's going to then proceed to start a fire, and that will put a real damper on your fries. So don't do that. Now that we have our potatoes peeled, washed multiple times, we're going to cut them, and it's a lot easier to work with the potato if you cut it lengthwise and so it's flat first. And you want to make sure not to cut any of your fingers off because also a damper on your potatoes. For these, I'm just going to cut them into, I'm going to go with thirds because it seems like a good idea. Just cutting it into thirds. And you want to ideally keep them all the same shape. This is harder to do when you're dealing with round objects because, like, round objects. But as long as you, you're paying attention, you'll be able to. Fine. Something else I forgot to mention you'll need is a bowl to put the potatoes in so that way as soon as they're cut they can go in there and a thermometer that preferably goes up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to be using this candy one just because it's the only thermometer we have that goes that high. Then once you cut the, the potatoes you want to put them right in the water that way they can, all the starch meat come, can be um, released. If you have a really wide potato, you can cut it into quarters just so they're all roughly the same size. Because that's ideally what you want when deep frying or shallow frying. And similar to the potato peeler, you want to be careful not to cut yourself because damper on the fries. Oh my, that's going to be a lot of fries. Oh well. They'll be tasty. Then you just want those to sit. And when they're sitting, I'm going to get the pan to start with the temperature. 
And something you want to be aware of is after you cut up a potato, they have a lot more... They... It makes... It spreads out its volume a lot more. So after I cut this up, I realized there was a lot more potato and I wasn't going to fit in that pan. So I decided to go for this significantly larger pan, which might be too big, but at least it's not going to be too small. And you just want to coat the bottom with oil. Preferably halfway up your length of your potatoes or whatever you are surface frying. You're just going to start warming that up. It'll take a while to get up there depending on the stove you have. So, I don't know. It'll just be something you're going to have to wait for. You might want to get it up to temperature beforehand if you know you have everything ready. I feel like I should take this moment when the oil's heating up to inform you of how dangerous oil is when you're working with it. When it gets warm, if any water gets in, it's going to go and uh, start a fire. And that's just not good. Also, if the oil you're using starts to smoke or steam or any of that stuff, you want to turn down the temperature. And apparently, as I kind of learned, it changes temperature very rapidly. So it's something you do want to monitor and try to get it close, but not over the desired temperature. Which in this case, I'm going to be trying to stick around 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah, just be very careful and maybe don't wear a super nice shirt. So yeah, um, while I work again that, I'm going to dry off these potatoes. You're just going to want to dry off these potatoes as much as you can, because that way you don't have to fire, because that's no fun. Now that the potatoes are all dry, I'm going to move over the camera and I'll meet you over at the stove. See you there. So you're just going to want to put whatever is you're frying in. But apparently I don't have enough oil. And this part takes longer than you might expect, you just want to put them in little bits at a time, so as long as it's not all at the same time, it'll be fine. And if they're sizzling, that's a good sign. And yeah. And you can see, maybe, whenever I put some in, little bits of oil shoot out, and that is why you don't want to wear a new shirt. You want to not overcrowd your pan. And at this point you don't necessarily have to use the tongs, as long as you don't like drop them from extreme distances. And you're just going to want to make sure that they don't stay in the same spot and that you're moving them around and all that. This part takes slightly longer than you would expect. You're going to want to monitor your temperature. Maybe turn it up a little. Preferably use a thermometer, but... You don't have to necessarily turn them the whole time, just make sure 
They don't stay in the same place too long. But don't leave the room, because hot oil, dangerous. And when you're turning these, you're going to want to prep a bowl with some paper towel on it, so after you get out the potatoes, you can take off some of the grease. And with hot oil, especially, or anything hot, you want to make sure that you keep the handle in when you walk away, so not out towards, because dangerous. It takes slightly longer than you'd expect, if your assumption is based on how fast food restaurants do it. They use special oil that can go hotter and stuff. As long as there's little bubbles coming, then you know it, you're in around the right temperature. So now that they're cooked, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of the heat. Well then, I feel as though now's a great time to point out that I'm not an expert at this and that I kind of just goofed it up. I managed to, I don't know if you want to say burn or cook or what you want to use. Three potatoes down to not very many fries, so no Nicholas, but anyways, assuming you've done it right, take that. I'm going to add whatever you want to season it with. And then we'll it And all I'm doing is throwing it forward and pulling it back. That way it lands back in the bowl. Assuming I do it right. So yeah. Not bad. Kind of hot, but the one thing I do want to mention before you go is that with your oil, you want to store it in a container and then either throw it out or take it to a used oil center and not pour it down the drain. And yeah, thanks for watching. If you do like cooking kind of shows, I like to try to pick a recipe I can do better next time. And I don't know. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.